these bitches don't want me to be great. And when I say those bitches, I'm talking about the Zeus Network. So a lot of you have been in my comments today on other videos. And some of you may have been wondering as well as these people who have been commenting um, where the Baddies East after show is. Some of you asked me, some of you are wondering. You went to your phones today, you went to your TV, you were looking for the Baddies East after show and you were going to watch it and it was nowhere to be found. Well, you can thank the Zeus Network for that. Because they had my video removed. They had the after show taken down. They reported it as copyright. And it was taken down. Oh, you better believe we're going to talk about it. So welcome back again to the Baddies East after show. Only on Damien After Dark. The official Baddies East after show. Now, after this video, this is the only after show for Baddies East that I'm going to do that's pre-recorded. After this, I'm doing strictly lives, okay? The only reason I'm not doing this one live now is because it's midnight. I don't know how many of y'all are in bed. I don't, you know, and I, I wanted to get this out as soon as possible since the other one got deleted, okay? <clears throat> so, I did a live today on the way to work kind of explaining what happened, but... Even during that live, at one point, I lost service, which I do kind of work in a rural area, so um, maybe that's what that was. I don't know, but I kind of lost service, so if you watch the live that I did today, you'll notice that like it was kind of choppy, and then my phone got too hot, I guess because it was like my phone holder was like under the windshield, and the heat was getting on the phone. And then the phone's running a live video, so it got too hot that it quit. It it, it shut the um the live off. So I'm like, you know what? I'll just explain it tonight on the after show. So for those who don't know, if you didn't watch the live video that I posted today explaining what happened, um, I woke up this morning. <clears throat> damn, I can't. I've been trying to clear my throat since I started this damn video. Um. Woo! Something about that first. Something about that first taste of that sun drop, baby. So I woke up this morning. By the way, shout out to everybody who, who joined in on the live after show. We had so much fun. If you missed the live after show, turn on your post notifications. Get subscribed. Because you don't want to miss it next week. We had so much fun. It was two hours. Two hours long. Have we ever done a two-hour live after show? No, they've always been 30, 45 minutes. I had so much fun with y'all. Um. So, yeah, we did that. I wake up this morning, and I'm like, let me go check out, see if anybody's commenting. See, you know. The, you know, that that sort of thing. And when I went, there was nothing there. And I'm like, well, that's weird. And it's nowhere to be found. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I can't find the after show. I can't find the video that I posted last night anywhere. So, I go to StreamYard. If you're not familiar with StreamYard, StreamYard is a third-party website that us YouTubers use that allows y'all, that allows us to, um, Put the comments on the screen, you know, that kind of thing. So I went to StreamYard because I knew that they they have a link. Anytime you go live, they will put a link there to the video. So I'm like, let me go to StreamYard and I will just go to the link from there. I go to the link and I click it. I'm going to show y'all what it said, okay? I'm not gonna, I, instead of just telling y'all, because in the live that I did earlier today, I just told you off the top of my head what, what it said, but this is word for word what I saw. <laughs> so y'all saw, right? You saw what I'm talking about, right? Now, typically, here's why I think I pissed somebody off at Zeus Network. T 
typically, if I'm not mistaken, I haven't gotten a copyright strike before, but I think I've been warned by YouTube over using something that wasn't mine before, right? And in the past, they will, YouTube, you will get a notification, I believe. I could be wrong on that, so somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But also, they email you, if I'm not mistaken. You get an email about the copyright claim. I didn't get any emails. I didn't get any notifications. I got nothing. I click on that on the StreamYard link and it says you have got a copyright claim by the Zeus Network LLC. Y'all saw, we just posted it. So that's why I feel like somebody in that camp over there hopped on our live last night, saw us. Maybe they didn't hop on it. Maybe they just saw it. I don't know. And decided, oh, let's 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 report this this video. Now, my thing was, where the fuck was the copyright? Because I was like, how did I? If if you tuned into the live last night, you will know. Not once did I play the episode. Not once did I show a cast member's face. And even if I wanted to, I could. Like, if I wanted to put a picture of Roly up here right now, I can. They don't own the rights to Roly's picture. But I didn't. I posted nothing. It was literally the entire after show was me in front of this leafy background talking with my subscribers. Where is the copyright in that? So then I started thinking, okay, maybe it was the thumbnail. Because originally I had the thumbnail as this. Originally this was the thumbnail. And then when the live was, because I used that to promote the live. Now when the live was over, I changed the thumbnail. Before the video was taken down and before I knew anything about copyright, I took the thumbnail off and I replaced it with the, um, the, you know, what I usually use, which is what Zeus uses. I typically use the same thumbnail that Zeus uses on their app. So I changed it only to wake up and, and, and get a copyright claim. I, I won't even say it's a copyright claim because like I said, YouTube never told me you have received a copyright strike, whatever. They just said the video has been removed because from Zeus Network, LLC, whatever. Whatever the fuck Zeus did. Now, while we're talking about what Zeus did, let's talk about what they don't do. Why y'all worry about little old me sitting up here talking about your shows what y'all need to be worried about is why them scenes be 20 and 30 fucking minutes long. What y'all need to be worried about is why every goddamn cast member that could come up on y'all set, why every goddamn cast member that appears on your screen wants to sue the fuck out of you. That's what y'all need to worry about. Y'all need to worry about, you know, these cocaine-fueled cast members uh, putting hands on others Beating the hell out of people, busting people upside their head, busting noses, folks bleeding left and right. Pregnant women smoking and drinking and fighting. That's what the fuck you need to be worried about. Instead of me and what I got going on up here, because I'm up here, I'm helping y'all. If anything, the, <laughs> the fuck, I'm helping y'all. If it wasn't for people like me, and these other creators and bloggers who are talking about y'all's fucking shows every Sunday night, every week. If it wasn't for people like us, y'all wouldn't be where the fuck y'all are. And whether Zeus Network came around or not, I would still be on YouTube running my fucking mouth. Okay? So I don't need Zeus Network. We can stop talking about them after today. And I'll go on to something else. But I'm tell you why I'm not. Because I'm I, I'm not fixing to stop talking about your asses. Since I'm going to make every goddamn dime I can make off you bitches. Since y'all worry about what we over here talking about. I don't know if they was mad because we was saying that 
you know, we thought Natalie and, and Lenny was fucking around. I don't know if they mad about that. I don't know what happened. But it's like, let me be great. Leave me alone. Okay. I ain't bothering nobody. I come here every Sunday night with me and my lovely supporters, subscribers, my family, whatever we whatever we want to call them. Y'all want to call, however we want to say it. We come here, we talk shit, we laugh, we have a good time. We go home. I don't give a fuck what Natalie and Lemon Plumber, Lemon Pepper and all. I don't care what y'all do outside of Sunday nights and baddies. I'm just like, of all the things they could be focused on. And I was really proud of that video because, number one, I worked hard to get the whole little setup going. My little live setup. Is the audio working? Do I do, you know, do I look good? Got everything prepared, ready to go. You know, it went well. We had 30-something people in here with us. And then y'all come along wanting to rain on somebody's parade. Clean your own house before you worry what the fuck is going on over here. Okay? Clean your own fucking house before you worry about what's going on at Damien After Dark. Because while y'all trying to be against me, you could use my expertise while y'all producing these trash ass segments and scenes. Now, <clears throat> let's get into the actual after show, okay? Because I could, I could dog walk Zeus Network for 30 minutes straight. I could sit here and call them everything under the motherfucking sun. But I'm, I'm not because, you know, it is what it is at this point. We can move forward or I can dwell on the shit. So I'm choosing to move forward. I ain't forgot about it, though. I ain't forgot about it. And y'all ain't gonna stop me from getting up here each and every Sunday night and running my mouth and saying what I want to say. Because we live in this place called the United States of a motherfucking America. And we do this little thing called whatever the fuck we want. Okay? So this whole copyright, take the video down, don't do nothing but add fuel to the fire, baby. Now I ain't going to do nothing but come harder. So, <clears throat> before we get into the episode, I want to say all my notes that I made for the episode are gone. Because typically after I, um, typically after I do them, I don't save them only because I don't need them anymore. And if I saved every single after show notes that I had on my laptop, I would lose memory so quick. My memory, my memory would be so full. Um, but I can remember a lot of what we talked about, so I'm just gonna go off the dome. Okay, um, this video may be shorter than the yesterday's, of course, because one, we're not live, obviously, but two, I, like I said, I don't have all my detailed notes that I usually make pertaining the episode. So we're just gonna go through it. Strictly based off what I remember, this is going to be interesting to see how this goes, but I promise I will hit the key bullet points that happen in the episode and, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll be worth the watch. I promise you. Okay. Make sure before we continue, make sure you get subscribed, make sure you like the video. Um, if you feel like donating, if you, if you can donate or you want to support whatever, I got that in the description box below. Shout out to those, by the way, shout out to those that have sent cash apps, that have bought from the Amazon wish list, those who sent super chats. I don't shout you guys out each individually like I should, but I do want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart because I know we living in tough times right now, baby, and every dollar counts. And the fact that y'all are literally giving the way you are, it means the world to me. Like, I, I it means the world to me. So... This is going to be a first, going off with no notes, okay? The episode begins, and we we had a little bit of foreshadowing, right? We saw what's to come 
towards the end of the season, which is the showdown between Sukihana and Roly. They apparently have a big fight, big beef that happens. The fight happens in Jamaica, and we see a little bit of that. So we get some foreshadowing, and the episode begins. They're kind of showing us what's to come. And then we see Natalie in L.A. pulling up in an all-black SUV to the Zeus Network offices, right? She shows up to the offices, and um, she talks about, you know, I'm back, I'm Natalie, blah, blah, blah. You know what Natalie does. And she says that, you know, they're going to D.C., they're going to Jersey, they're going to Philly, they're going to Boston, and they're going to New York and Jamaica on this Baddies East tour. So those are the, those are the cities that we can look forward to seeing them in. Did I'm, I'm curious to know if anyone attended any of these um baddies east tour dates because if you did please let me know in the comments let me know how it went i know um some of you said that y'all went to the jocelyn's cabaret tour that she did um so if you went to the baddies east i want to i want to hear how it went i'm curious you know i'd like to know what they do other than perform when they get there just get on the mic i guess hype the crowd up party with them i guess that's what they do um so Natalie goes into the Zeus Network office because ever since Zeus has gone up, as they like to say, Zeus going up, whatever, since they've been doing well and making all this money, they've now got this big, nice office in LA and they've really upgraded and they and they've done well for themselves. And I'm I'm happy for them, honestly. I'm happy that they've, you know, this man can start from here and has made this huge network that's up there with Apple and you know uh uh hulu and netflix and all that I'm, I'm happy for them i just don't like the shady shit they did getting my channel or getting my uh lord don't let me say my channel down knock on wood get my video down so um and natalie meets with stunner girl roly krishan and Scotty, we see them come into the, the office and meet with Natalie. So, off the bat, how are we feeling about the returning cast members? Stunner Girl, Roly, Krishan. I mean, at this point, I guess it is what it is. We already knew who was returning. We did a video on it here and we talked about it. However, it's just like, okay, after this season, can we start fresh do we have to bring Rolly back again? Do we have to bring Scotty back again? Krishan, like, like, can we can we start fresh? I get that these are fan favorites to some, but I'm just kind of over it. I'm kind of over it at this point. And Stunner Girl, here's the thing about her. I get that she's got a lot of fans and, and stands and people love her. But, eh, I mean, to me, she's, 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 she's just a pretty girl. That's it. Like, to, I, no shade. I'm not trying to hate, but it's not like Stutter Girls just got this funny, charismatic personality that makes you want to watch her. You know what I'm saying? Um. So, yeah, I don't know how I feel about them all being back, to be honest with you. Um. I have an issue with, with each of them, to be honest, and them being on this show. Like, and we can, that's a whole other video, but like, Roly, we'll talk about that in a second when it comes to her. Um, no, you know what? Let's go ahead and get into it. Because Natalie ends up telling the girls, okay, I'm going to introduce you guys into all the new cast members. And she shows them on a TV in the boardroom who's going to be on the show. She goes down a list of all the girls who are going to be on a sh going to be on the show. And when they bring up Sia, which is the more masculine presenting girl um natalie says you know sia is going to be our first and before natalie can even get out of her mouth krishan says dyke and it's like I know Krishan is ignorant, but it's like at some point we can't let ignorance be an excuse. I've always known 
being in the LGBT community, that dyke is not the best word to use when it comes to a lesbian female, when it comes to a masculine presenting female. It's almost the equivalent of using the word that rhymes with maggot. You know what I'm saying? You just don't use it. It's a derogatory term. Now, do I, Krishan and Roly, they're ignorant. So I, I mean, I expect them to say things like that. But what got me with Roly is that she thought it was so funny. <laughs> oh, Krishan. <laughs> Girl, the word dyke is that funny to you? And y'all know, I already have issues with Roly based off of her behavior at the reunion last season. As y'all remember, last season at the reunion, Roly tried to clown DJ Sky for sleeping with Bobby Light's ex-boyfriend, Andre. Y'all remember Andre from Bobby I Love You Purr? They called him Rerun. He's the one who also had a little thing with Jeffree Star for a minute. And he had, he had allegedly left. He played basketball at one point for a different country or something and he had left his wife to go be with jeffree star and left his wife and baby or something like that allegedly um roly clowned dj sky for that and said that she was disgusting you are nasty you're disgusting because you slept with a bisexual man now she didn't say you slept with a bisexual man you're nasty you're disgusting but she pretty much did she said you maybe she said gay man you're nasty you're disgusting because you slept with a gay man either way she we know what she said we know what she was implying she didn't try to beat around the bush roly said it and i've always been looking at her with a side eye like hmm are you are you homophobic you got a problem with the gays and then there's those people that are like no roly's roly's into women herself roly's not you know roly Girl, bye. Miss me with that. Number one, just like I've said before, just because you get your pussy ate by a woman when you get drunk or because you think it's cute does not make you gay or lesbian. Okay? That's a whole other video. Just like I say, if a man gets his dick sucked by another man, I don't think it's gay. That's just me. You gotta you gotta live you gotta live it. I always, I always say this to people if you can't see yourself settling down living with the same sex getting married to the same sex having children with the same sex building a life with the same sex you, you're not gay i could go out here and get my cock sucked by a woman that don't make me straight making me straight i feel like would be courting her dating her going out on a date with her having a child with her marrying her being in love with her you know what I'm saying? So miss me with the little Roly likes women too. No, it's probably it's convenient for her. It's it's convenient, and, and and here's also another thing that I've noticed. I've known women who will be bisexual, be into men and women, but they still think that a man being with a man is 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 nasty. Now where is the logic in that? So you can be gay, but I can't. Okay, anyway. We're not going to get off on that topic. Speaking of Roly, did y'all know that her name was Gia? We find out in this episode that her real name is Gia. And she may have said that before, but I didn't know that. And I was shocked to find that. I'm like, because Roly don't look like a Gia to me. You know what I'm saying? She don't look like a Gia. G Gia, the, word, the name Gia sounds too delicate and dainty. I don't know. Roly look like she, you know have a girl's what's what's the name of a girl who would beat your ass i don't know i don't know anyway so let me just say this i don't think krishan and roly are homophobic i think they're just ignorant and they say stupid shit and they're unaware and hopefully in this season we will see we will get to see Sia, educate these two. Even though it's not her place to educate them, hopefully we will get that moment because we saw when Natalie introduced Sia on to the girls on the television or to us, we saw in Sia's confessional, she said, hi, my name is Sia. I don't like the word dyke. So 
I mean, Krishan's already using the word, so maybe there will be a conversation had amongst the two. And, you know, she can let them know, look, I don't appreciate this word. I don't like being called this. Um, speaking of, let me see just a second, y'all. Um, speaking of, did y'all notice how when Sia said that, like her introduction was so weird and it, and in her defense, it could have been edited, but it was like, what's up y'all? My name's Sia. I don't like the word dyke. And it was just like, well, I understand where she's coming from, but it was the timing of it all. Like I would never say, Hey, how are you doing? My name's Damien. I don't like the word queer or whatever, whatever the word could be. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like you don't introduce yourself like that, but maybe it was edited. So I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt and maybe and saying maybe it was edited. Um, but yeah, so Natalie ends up going through all the different cast members. I do want to hear from you guys on who was your favorite cast member. I know it's just episode one, but do you have a breakout star? Do you have someone who stood out to you? Okay. I'll tell y'all that the one person who stood out to me that I feel like is going to be the one to watch possibly as far as entertainment value, comedic relief. Um, and that is going to be uh, T. T was the one. She had the straight hair in the confessional and the nose ring, but at brunch, she had the big curly hair, and she talks really fast, just like this, and she's just, like, really eccentric, and oh my god, at first, I thought I wasn't gonna like T, I thought she was gonna be annoying, but she, she had me sold on her at the brunch, when they went to the brunch, she had me sold on her, I don't know, I just really like her, I think she's vibrant, I think she brings something different to the show, um, I think she's funny, so I'm excited to watch her. Let me know in the comments who 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 your breakout star was, and then also let me know who you could live without seeing. If there was somebody that you could live without seeing that's on the cast, for me, I don't care to see Biggie again, which I don't think Biggie's a part of the main cast. I think she was a replacement, but. I know she's going to end up being on the show. I don't care to see Biggie again. Um, as far as the main ones that we're just now being introduced to, Mariah Lynn, I don't really care to see. I'm going to give her a chance. But it's like I told my people on the live last night. I don't like when people do all that. You know, what's up, dude? What's how to go? You know, my name is Mariah Lynn. I'm from New York City. I do di like Mariah. If you really talk like that, okay. I'll give you the pass. But I, in my life, have experienced a lot of times where a person will be one way, talking like this, because they think it's cool, and they're trying to be all this and that. And then when they're around another group, they're talking just like this very valley girl. And that's what I'm wondering with you, Mariah Lynn. You know what I'm saying? When you're around your friends and your girls, do you talk like this? But then when you get on TV on Love & Hip Hop and Baddies, do you start popping your shit like this? You be talking like this right here, and I just don't like it. I don't, I don't, it, it's a turn off to me because it's like, be you, be yourself. Everybody else is taken. Stop trying to be what you think we want to see. And that's what I get from Mariah Lynn. Um... My mom liked Mariah Lynn. She watched her on Love and Hip Hop. So I'm going to try to give her a chance. Get to know the girl. Maybe she, maybe my, you know, assumption is wrong of what I'm seeing from her. But I'm just not really looking forward to seeing her. And Mo Vicky. Her and Mo Vicky both. They just, ick. They give me ick. You know? Gives me culture vulture. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. We're not doing that over here. We're not doing that over here. Um, now let's talk about the last scene because there's really only two scenes in this. Think about it. This whole episode, this 45 minute episode, there was two scenes, the 20 minute scene in the boardroom with Natalie and the four originals from last season and the 20 minute scene at brunch. And Zeus is worried about what I'm doing. It sound like y'all need to get in that editing room and trim some shit down and put the put the puzzle pieces together in a different way. 
Okay? So. Oh, wait, never mind. I totally forgot about the scene with Rock's family outside of the hotel. So, we find out that Tzatziki and Natalie are beefing before the show even begins. Why? I don't know. We were still trying to get to the bottom of that. Krishan says that her family came to see her and Latifah at the hotel just to check in on them. Latifah, I'm assuming, is Tzatziki. Um, and Krishan claims that the family just came to see them. But Natalie says that the whole family was trying to fight her, you know, they were on that type of shit. And I'm just like, y'all ain't even began filming. Why is Krishan's family coming up here to start shit? And two, my thing is, if Tzatziki, my issue with her being on this show is watching her on Blueface and Krishan crazy in love. She seemed very thirsty for the camera. She seems like she's always wanted to be famous and she's lived in her sister's shadow. Rock could care less about being famous. Tzatziki has always wanted it. So the fact that the one that doesn't want to be famous got it and the one that wants to be famous didn't, I think it kind of eats her up. And now she's finally getting her shot to be on this show and she's given a chance and you already trying to fight the boss on day one. You trying to fight the woman who, who started the show on day one. Cause she said that Natalie told her that she was going to hit her in the face or told her, shut up, told her, threatened her pretty much. And I'm just thinking, why would Natalie just threaten you out of nowhere in, in your city that you live in where you're, where you're, she knows your family's at. I just, I hate to say it, but I believe Natalie on this one. I don't believe that, that Natalie just threatened to seek I don't. Now, one thing I don't believe Natalie on is that, did y'all hear her when she was out there in the, um, when she was telling all them, you work for me, you bitches are on my payroll, y'all work for me, I run this shit. She also said, I make $20 million a year. Natalie, that chin's growing again, that chin is growing again like Pinocchio. Even if my name was Natalie, none of these bitches still couldn't chin check me. That chin's growing. Natalie, you ain't made no 20 goddamn million dollars a year. If you were, you wouldn't be arguing with Latifah out in the middle of the street in D.C. And I take that back. They weren't in Tzatziki City. They were in D.C., not Boston. Or wherever they're from. You ain't made no $20 million a year, Natalie. And if she was, I would give her her flowers. I would say, amen, sister. I would, like, seriously, think about it. From If Natalie came from the Bad Girls Club and literally worked her way up the Hollywood ladder and was making $20 million a year, I would say, hats off to you, sister. I have not a bad word to say about that woman. But you ain't made that, sis. Zeus Network might be making $20 million a year. That could make sense. Because, you know, they in a private jet every time you turn around. But I don't think Natalie's making that. She might be getting a little piece of the pie. A million, two million, whatever. But 20? Now... After this whole issue with Natalie versus Krishan and Tzatziki's family, she goes to her hotel room and she talks to Scotty and she tells Scotty, you know, because Scotty apparently has some issues with some of the girls on the cast already. Scotty and Anna Mack already have social media beef before the show even started. And so Natalie tells Scotty, look, you got your beef with some of the girls I'm beefing with Krishan and her sister now. I know the perfect place we can hash things out at. And just what she says, brunch. We can hash things out at brunch. It's the perfect place. And I'm just thinking, what? Brunch? 
And we talked about this last time on the live. No, ma'am. Not brunch where we sipping our mimosas and we eating our chicken and waffle and grits. And we done smoked our blunt before we walked up in the motherfucking building. You ain't killing my high with all that fighting and shit. Uh-uh. Take that shit outside. What you mean you want to hash everything out at brunch? The fuck? Anyway, I forget. It's reality TV, though. It's reality TV. So they go to brunch. And like I told my people last night on the live, that brunch scene was so staged. It was obvious. Stevie Wonder could have saw that. Because they're at brunch. And you got Scotty and Natalie and them sitting there. You got Scotty who's sitting there. And you got Anna Mac who walks in. And then they start fighting. And then we see next week there's Mariah Lynn who's sitting there, and then you got, Sli uh, 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 what's her name, S Smiley, you got Smiley, she walks in, with all black on, all black, hoodie on, ready to fight, her and Mariah Lynn go at it, it was just obviously a setup, and two, they're in a restaurant, fighting like this and nobody's like get out of our restaurant get out go 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 like it, you can tell that zeus was like hey we're gonna be filming here can y'all sign this contract and let us film here we'll pay you whatever there's gonna be some fighting going on you know they knew what was happening natalie knew what was happening and that's the crazy part when scotty and anna mac started fighting the whole time here's natalie stop 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 what do you mean stop you start you started this shit you supposed to be back there like this but natalie you know she's 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 trying to balance both roles producer and cast member so she's trying to stay in the character but at the same time stir her shit up you know what i'm saying so, Natalie tells Scotty, you got beef with Anna Mac, but you know she's going to be, she's coming here today to this brunch. So immediately, Scotty stands up because she's ready. She's ready to start fighting. And then Anna Mac walks in. And immediately, Scotty and Anna Mac go at it. Now, in my opinion, Anna Mac got her in more than one way. Because I didn't see Scotty land any licks. I saw Anna Mac land quite a few licks. And not only did she get her physically, she got her verbally. Because Anna Mac ate her ass up. She told Scotty, why the hell are you doing this for the cameras? She said, you just saw me in Miami and you didn't do shit. You're a minion. And everything Anna Mac was saying was the truth. Like, Scotty, if you just saw this girl in Miami and you had no smoke for her, why when the cameras are up... All of a sudden, now you want to fight her. You want to be big, Billy Badass Scotty. Oh, I know why. Because you know how sad you looked last season when your pimp put her hands on you. You know how all of us, the viewers, us on the after shows, us bloggers, us, us whatever you want to call us, you know how we all clowned your ass for letting Natalie walk all over you. Her family probably told her, too. You look fucking crazy on TV. Bring your ass back home. So, Scotty trying to redeem herself. But we don't want to see it, Scotty. We don't want to see it. Batty South, you fucked up. We gave you a chance. Batty's West, you fucked up. Here we are giving you another chance. I I I, I'm, I can't give you no more chances, girl. And we talked about this last night as well. One of my people in the live mentioned, they said, the problem is, is Scotty's just not a fighter like that. And I agree. I said that. That's the problem. Scotty is trying to force herself into something that she's not. You know, she's not a, she, she reminds me a lot of myself. I think that's why I've been so hard on her is because Scotty, you know, this is not who you are. You're not no ratchet ass female that's fighting in the clubs every week. You know, you're not some thirst, thirst bucket that's going to do the most. Scotty's just a chill chick. But it's like we talked about last night. I, I think she just puts up with this because to her, it's worth it. In a way, I can't blame her because 
it's like, put up with this shit, the fighting and Natalie's drama in her mouth, or go back to North Carolina working at a bar, living a regular life. You know what I'm saying? What would you do? You know what I mean? Would you want to put up with some bullshit and make great money, fly all over the world, fly private, get all your meals paid for, you know, live this luxury life and deal with some bullshit or go back home and deal with some bullshit while working a nine to five at Hooters. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not shaming the nine to five. I got one too. I'm just saying, I can see, I can see why Scotty has put up with the shit she's put up with for so long, even though we give her hell here. I got to keep it real with her at the same time. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I got to keep it real with her at the same time. Just is what it is. I mean, we, we're we rooting for you over here, Scotty. We really are. I want you to do better. I want you to come out on top. Um, Who do y'all think won that fight between Scotty, Scotty and Anna Mack? I'm, I'm curious to, to hear what you think about that. And who do you think is going to win between Smiley and Mariah Lynn? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Now, also next week, we get to see Natalie versus Camila. I don't know why they didn't put that in this episode. Because they could have trimmed down that first scene in the boardroom. And they could have trimmed down that brunch scene and gave us the Natalie and Camila scene. Why we got to wait for that? We all know that Camila is Natalie's, one of her, you know arch enemies in reality TV. Their beef started when they were on BGC Redemption, which was the all-star version of Bad Girls Club. And ever since, their beef has just played out throughout the years on social media. On you know, It's just been this ongoing beef. And from the beginning of Baddies, when Baddies ATL started, the fans wanted Camila from the get-go. And now they're, Natalie's finally given us what we want and Camila's here. And we see next week, Camila was caught off guard by Natalie. I think Camila was thinking, you know, we 40-year-old women, we grown. This is going to be like some real housewives type shit. You're going to come in, we're going to talk about our issues, and we're going to be done. But Camila didn't know that. Obviously, she would, obviously she hasn't been watching baddies. Because I don't think she was expecting Natalie to come in and just swing it straight at the bat on her ass. I kind of felt sorry for Camila. So I'm interested to see how that plays out next week. We're going to be talking about all that and more on the official live Baddies East After Show only on Damien After Dark right here on my channel each and every Sunday night. And we are not going to let the Zeus Network stop us, okay? So if you want to be a part of all the action and the fun, make sure you turn on your post notifications now. Get subscribed. And that way your phone or your device will alert you when I go live. So you will be right there front row when the show begins and you can get all the action, okay? Because I'm telling you, there's nothing like being there live, okay? It's a party over here. So bring your drinks, bring your blunts, bring whatever you like to indulge in because Sunday nights are a party over here on Damien After Dark, okay? Also, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Click the thumbs up button right below this video and like the video. I would appreciate that so much. That gets us in the algorithm. If you would like to support the channel and take it a step further, you can donate. In the description box below will be ways that you can donate using Cash App, PayPal, Venmo, and Zelle. I will also have my Amazon wish list there as well if you'd like to use that instead. I appreciate everyone's support. Make sure you join the conversation and leave me your thoughts and opinions. And then I will get back in the comments and we can talk about this, this episode together. I love you guys so, 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 so much. Those of you who tuned in to the live and those of you who tuned in to this pre-recorded version. I love you so much. Okay? Y'all have no idea. Until next time, I will see you Sunday night for the Baddies East live after show only on Damien After Dark. Okay? See y'all.